part video we're going to discuss the two limit theorems of probability theory so namely the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem first of all we'll go through the theoretical description of the theorems then i will illustrate here the theorems using the computer simulations and then we're going to discuss how we can apply the theorems to solve the problems so let's start with the law of large numbers it proves our intuition that the average of many measurements is more accurate than a single measurement. Basically, let's say we're going to have n independently and identically distributed random variables with the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. And let's generate n random values and take its average. And this value is going to be again the random value. So the central, uh, the law of large numbers tells me that as I increase the n, this number is going to be close to the theoretical mean for most of the time. So in order to illustrate this theorem, so let's going to take this random variable x, which is going to take either 0, either 1 was the same probability 0 0.5. So theoretically, it has the expected value to be equal to the 0 0.5. Now, in order to show uh, in order to show the law of large numbers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate n random values of zeros and ones and I'm going to find its mean by adding all of the numbers and dividing this as n. So the low flush number tells me that this number is close to 0 0.5 for most of the time if I increase the n. So we are going to illustrate this using the R. So this is the computer program which helps us to make the statistical simulations and it helps you to make the analysis of data. So I would like to generate n uniformly distributed random numbers. So if you type the command n uniform, r uniform, for example 10, it's going to generate here 10 random numbers and the range of 0 and 1 was the uniform distribution. If you would like to check whether it has, it has so those numbers have the uniform distribution. You can just run this command for many numbers, and you can just save them in some array, and then later on you can draw the histogram of this array with the probability true. So if you make this probability to be equal to the true, it's going to draw the density function of this random variable. If you make this false, it's going to draw the frequency function of this random variable. So let's do this. So I see the histogram of the x, and the, I see the density, which is equal to the 1, which confirms that x has the uniform distribution. So now let's go in. So I would like to use this uniform distribution, uniform, the distributed random variables, in order to generate the value 0 and 1. So if the random value is less than 0 0.5, I'm going to get, I'm going to return 1. If this is more than 0 0.5, I'm going to return 0. So if I type the command if else, so it's going to return 1 if this is, if this number is less than 0 0.5 and 0 if this number is more than 0 0.5. So for example, if I type it here, it's going to return the sequence of zeros and ones. Basically, it's going to generate n random values with the uniform distribution it's going to compare each of the random values with a 0 0.5 and it's going to return 1 if this is less than 0 0.5 and 0 if this is more than 0 0.5. So I would like to find its mean, right? So let's find the mean of all of the 10 numbers. So if I run this a lot of times, so every time I might get different results, right? So 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Sometimes this result might be the same as the theoretical one, as what we expect. And the law of large numbers tells me that if I increase this number 10 to be 10,000, for example, so it tells me that most of the time, you see, so as it, and if you run this code for many times, so most of the time you're going to get the result which is really close to the theoretical values. So now let's consider the second theorem, the central limit theorem. It tells us that the distribution of this axiom has a normal distribution, basically. So previously, we uh, generated n random values and found the mean, and we said that this mean is 
most of the time to be equal to, to will be close to the mu as we increase the n and the central limit theorem tells me that this is the random variable and this has the normal distribution so the beauty of the theorem is that no matter so it, it works no matter what is the distribution of each of the random values here so in order to distribute in order to illustrate to you this theorem so what we're going to do is I'm going to generate n random values right and I'm going to find their mean and since I would like to understand what is the distribution of this mean I need to save the mean for many running of this code and I need to draw the histogram right so let's n to be equal to five thousands or let me first of all initialize the area x bar is equal to the rep of 5000 so it's going to generate me the array x bar with 5000 entries of zeros for i and 1 to the 5000s i'm going to generate n random values with uniform distribution and I'm going to find their mean so basically n random values with uniform distribution and or 10 random values with uniform distribution and let's find the mean and save this in the x bar i so at the end I would like to just draw the histogram of the x bar was the probability true so let's let's do this so know that all of the random values here has the uniform distribution I'm going to sum the 10 random values and find a mean and I'm going to find the the distribution of this mean right by finding the histogram of all the means so if I run this I will get the roughly the normal distribution so this is what does the central limit theorem so let's now talk about the application of the central limit theorem it helps us to approximate the binomial distribution so let's say x has the binomial distribution with the parameters n and p then x can be approximated using the normal distribution with the parameters np which is the mu right so the mean of the binomial distribution and npq which is the variance of the binomial distribution so basically the probability that x random variable is less or equal than the small x is roughly the phi at the x minus mu divided to the sigma right but I need to add here 0 0.5 so let's consider an example suppose that a course which I would like to create has a capacity of 250 people but there are 1550 invitations per cent so each person who receives the invitation has a probability of 0 0.135 of attending the course independently from each other so I would like to know if I in white if I already has sent the invitations what is the probability that the number of the people attending the course will exceed the capacity right so basically x here is the number of the people who is going to come to the course is the random variable x has the binomial distribution with the parameters n and p if I would like to find the probability that the number of the people will exceed the capacity I need to find the probability that x is more than 250 which is difficult to do with the binomial distribution so in, order to, so in order to solve this we can approximately find this using the normal distribution where the mean will be n multiplied to the p and the sigma will be npq and the square root of this is 13.45 and the probability that x is more than 240 is 1 minus probability that x is less than 240 it is 1 minus phi of 2.32 which will be 0 0.0102